Hey, welcome back, guys. Steve Buck and Roth, Midwest Corporate Air. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about what we do when we have the engine fair in a multi-engine airplane. Remember, in our first video, we talked about multi-engine aerodynamics. In the second video, we took the time to understand side slip and how it affects us. In this third video, we want to talk about what to do when we do have that engine failure. But if we go back and we look at the overview video, one of the things I talked about was when you look at a data standpoint, multi-engine flying in general aviation does not present itself as being really any safer than single engine flying. And one of the reasons for that is when you do lose an engine, you have to do things, you have to do them timely, and you have to do them correctly. When we lose an engine in a single engine airplane, what typically happens is we have one option. We have to maintain control, stay at a proper glide rate, and find that place we're going to land the airplane. But when we lose the engine in a multi-engine airplane, we're dealing with a lot more energy and more options. So we're dealing with an airplane that, that may weigh five, seven, eight thousand pounds versus something that may weigh a couple thousand pounds. And we're dealing with higher speeds. So we're dealing with a lot more kinetic energy. And we're also dealing with the procedure when we lose an engine that needs to be done again, fairly expeditiously, and it needs to be done correctly. So let's start with a process that I learned years and years ago. Anytime we lose an engine in a multi-engine airplane, the technique that I use is number one, maintain aircraft control. That's number one. Now we've got to do that both laterally and we've got to do that not only laterally, we've got to do that vertically as well. So step one, we're going to maintain aircraft control. We're going to do it laterally. We're going to do it vertically. Step two is we're going to maximize power in both engines. Now in a Diamond Twin Star, that's tough to do in a training environment because we've got to pull the power lever back to simulate the failed engine. But if we get into training in 310s and Seminoles and so forth, we, we can maintain, we can maximize power on both engines. Step three, we want to minimize our drag. We're going to make sure our gear is up. We're going to make sure our flaps are up. And then we're going to make sure our prop is feathered. But we don't do that until we go through and we identify we verify and we feather. So we're gonna talk about how to do each one of these steps here. And then last of all, we need to trim for performance. We need to trim so we can maintain control of that aircraft. So let's go back to the beginning here. And we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna start talking about how we maintain aircraft control. So I just broke ground, climbing out, positive rate, gear up, climb on, climbing away and away from the airport environment, and all of a sudden I have an engine failure. Maybe my left engine rolls back. So the first thing might be kind of surprising, and that is I don't care which engine failed. I don't have time to think about it right now, and I don't try to solve that problem. The very first thing I do is I maintain control of that airplane. And I do it laterally by stepping on that rudder and bringing it back to the heading bug. We should always take off with our heading bug on the runway heading. So we step on that rudder and we realign that airplane with our, with our departure runway. Imagine if we were on a parallel runway and we let our, an engine failure take us over into another aircraft. So we wanna maintain control, stick it on that heading bug, shove that rudder in there. From a speed standpoint, we need to maintain no slower than blue line. And blue line on that airplane, we need to know in a diamond twin star, blue line is 82. And what that 82 is, what that blue line is, is best rate of climb single engine, 82 knots. It can vary from that. If we're flying a, a, a DA-42 with vortex generators, 
but typically we're dealing with 82, but we're looking at blue line. We need to make sure we don't go slower than blue line. Now the question is, can we go faster than blue line? Sure. If you lose the engine and you're doing 90 and it's climbing fine, you don't have to pull the nose up and take it to 82 and add more P-factor. But if you're at 90 and you're hardly climbing, then you've got to start bringing that nose up and getting it to 82 knots. So again, blue line is your minimum speed. You want to, you want to fly out on when you've lost your engine. But at the same time, if you're climbing away fine at 85 or 87 or 92 knots, there's no reason you can't keep it there. Because when you bring that nose up, you are going to increase P factor. You're going to increase induced drag. It's going to be a little bit harder airplane to fly. But at the same time, if it's climbing, that's the most important thing. And you'll get a better climb rate being right there at blue line. That's where the manufacturer wants us at. Okay, so we're going to maintain control laterally. We're going to maintain control vertically. But remember, as soon as you put that right rudder in there, as soon as you put that right rudder in there, assuming you have a left engine or a left engine failure, you're putting it in there to straighten that airplane out. But what we have to remember is if we put rudder in there only, we're starting to side slip the airplane. So it's kind of a transition. Get it going straight until we figure out which airplane engine we've lost. So now we're going to reach down and maximize our power. Should be maximized anyway. We're going to check that the power is maximized. But again, in the Twin Star training environment, one of those power levers is going to be pulled back. That's how the, the CFI, the multi structure, was able to give us the engine failure. So maintain control laterally, maintain control vertically, maximize your power. Now we need to minimize the drag. Again, we're doing all this before we worry about which engine has failed. We've got to make sure we, we don't get the, you know, the cart before the horse here. So we minimize drag by making sure our gear is up. So we go gear up, we move over, flaps up. We're just checking them because both those should already be up. And then we're going to go to our prop. So gear up, flaps up, prop. And then we're going to go through identify, verify, feather. So we get our gear up, make sure it's up, flaps are up, and we're going to the prop. And now we're going to identify. How are we going to identify a dead engine? We're going to do so with our feet, with the pressure on the rudder pedals, how much pressure we've got to give it. So I go immediately to dead foot, dead engine. If I'm not using my left, if I'm not using my left foot, and I need right foot, right rudder to keep going a straight line, dead foot, dead engine, I've lost my left engine. And, and vice versa, if I'm not using my right foot, I'm using my left all the way, I've lost my right engine, dead foot, dead engine. So that's how we initially identify it. We verify it based upon what airplane we're flying. If we're coming out in a Cessna 310 or maybe a Seminole, we want to verify it with EGT if it's got an exhaust gas temperature gauge in it. Okay, we don't, we do not want to verify it with manifold pressure. Because if I lose an airplane engine, my manifold pressure is going to go up. It's going to go up to the uh, atmospheric pressure. We don't use manifold pressure gauges to verify dead engines. We're going to use fuel flow or exhaust gas temperature, or whatever that manufacturer talks about using. But manif uh, using manifold pressure, that's not the answer. All right, and then last of all, we're going to feather. So we're going to feather the engine after we've identified and verified that that is the dead engine. And when we feather that engine, we're going to bring that prop completely straight towards the airflow. Remember, a feather is when that propeller, looking from the pilot's eyes, if you could stand behind that propeller, it's going to be parallel with the, with the relative wind right there. Okay, So we feather that prop, and then, and only then, are we going to trim for performance. We want to trim that airplane so we can fly it with that engine failed and feathered. And then we're going to start looking at our options as what we can do to get back home. So we're going to Continue climbing, 
We're going to start thinking about where we're going to go, which is probably going to be right back behind us. And I said, weather is bad, and I've got something really close I can turn to and fly a VFR. And then I'm going to dive into my checklist right away as well and make sure I've properly secured that engine, and I'm going to be flying the, uh, the uh, uh, single-engine approach properly into that airport. Okay, so... That's a summary of what we do when we lose the engine. The first video we went through, multi-engine aerodynamics. The second one was all about understanding the side slip. And now it's what to do to control that engine after I've lost one, to control the airplane after I've lost that engine and bring it back home. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching my video. Have a great day.